new shoe day. We are new shoe day here. Let me test if this mic's actually working. All right, new, the new shoe day. We've got these Bont, uh, sorry, not Bonts. These are Shimano. Just a quick plug before the video starts. Go to DrewRider.com. If you're interested in $40 jerseys, there's a couple left that did sell out. I apologize for that. We've got more coming down the track. My two ebooks, Carb the Fuck Up and Drew Rider's Lean Body Bible. The best ebooks if you want to get seriously lean and live a seriously simple, basic, digital nomad lifestyle and save a shit ton of money, earn great money, meet cool people, inspire people, and get the best results you've ever got could imagine in your life. Go to DrewRider.com, get my latest ebooks. Game changes, guaranteed. Thanks to our friends at Shimano, we, uh, Shimano Nigeria. We have the Shimano XC9, which is one of my favorite ever shoes uh, Shimano's ever made. I like it for many reasons. I'll show you why. It has the Boa dial system on there, which is good, but if you ever get it, make sure you get the double system so that it goes up or down. Tighten up, loosen off. Actually, loosen, tighten, loosen, tighten. So if you're hitting a sprint, hitting a climb, Get a bit of a tighten. If you do it too much, you can just back it off one click at a time. So massive micro adjustment there. Fantastic system. Dune Rider's favorite setup, the Boa dials uh, in both directions. Not just one, some of them are just one, so be careful. Never ever buy a shoe that just the Boa dials only go one direction. Because to make the micro adjust, you gotta pop it off and then just always make sure you can go both ways. All right? I don't even know why the fuck Boa release a product that only goes one way. That's just dumb. And these things cost five cents to make, probably. Just make it double. Yeah, put it on there. But this, camera, this camera's cutting out for some reason. Anyway, so this is a Shimano Top of the Range XC shoe. Let's go. Let's test the stiffness of that. There is just... There is no no flex in there. If you're flexing that, you are on a shit ton of steroids. You are on a lot of steroids. If you can flex this shoe, you are on some serious rich piano steroids there. Some full netty bra... You want to probably about a hundred milligram of oxymethylone a day if you can flex that. You are fucking stronger than a gorilla. So there's no flex in there. There's torsion. There's just no twisting. So this is as good as any road shoe out there on the stiffness scale. Shimano call it 11. Their road version is a 12. But if you can tell the difference between 11 and 12 when it's this stiff, then that's, I don't know, what's going on there? You must... Uh, must want some serious fucking steroids to be able to tell the difference in that. So that is incredible. And um, this is Natasha's old shoes. Where are they? Here they are here. So this is like an entry level shoe. This is what a lot of people start with. And so then they have a, a really flexy, cheap mountain bike shoe that flexes a lot. It's a lot of torsion. It bends like a banana a little bit. So then they get like a road shoe. And they're like, wow, this is so much stiffer. All right. But it's not because it's a road shoe. It's because it's a carbon sole top end shoe. The stiffness between these bonts and the shimano the shimano is is 99.9 percent .9 the same all right so there's no real difference there there's no real difference there in terms of interface of the pedal it doesn't really matter as long as there's no slop up and down slop like knocking uh but yeah so with the road pedals you do need to replace the cleats a lot regu more regularly especially if you're going to walk around if you're a pro cyclist and you never walk you got a team car behind you people hand you water bottles then yeah, you, your cleats can last a long time, but otherwise, for us mere mortals out there, the cleats will wear out really quickly, and it can be very dangerous if you're not maintaining your cleats. You've got to check maybe a few days for cracks, bits of plastic flaking off, because you, otherwise you could be in a sprint, and I've seen it before, I've done it myself, got to sprint, pull a pedal, and then bang, you're on the top tube, singing soprano. So you really want to be careful with using road shoes, check your cleats every few days for any breaking off fragments and stuff like that and uh, replace the cleats regularly, which costs a lot of money, 20, 30 bucks a pop, a few times a year, just because your cleats are made out of plastic. This is why I do recommend the Shimano SPD cleat. Lasts a long, long time. It's recyclable. They're cheap as chips, and they're just, they're just so much more pragmatic. And a Shimano pedal I recommend, XTR pedals. The new ones, the N, M9 1000s, are more durable, apparently. It has a better actual durability. If you do have slop in your pedals, uh, if you get them serviced or send them back to Shimano, they will warranty. They'll give you a free pair of XDR pedals because the slop means that the axle is going to wear out and potentially fail. If you Google up XTR uh, pedal axle fail, there's plenty of pictures of people riding along with sloppy axles and it's just the end caps just snapped off and the pedal slipped off and they've crashed or they've cut their ankle open. So be very careful. Everything wears out or just get sloppy. So if you do get sloppy, send them back to Shimano 
and that will help them diagnose the problem and make sure it's safe for their consumers. If it's got the XTR label on there, it means it's going to be 100% legit. And if it's not 100% legit, send it back so Shimano can make it legit. Because Shimano is a great company making good things and they want to know if their product's shit or legit. Never accept poor quality Durace or Shimano stuff. It should be really, really good. Uh, so this is a Bont shoe, incredibly stiff. Um, let's look at the weights here. So this is about 270 grams for the road shoe. And the mountain bike's about 270 grams as well. So the difference is zero pretty much. Uh, even if it was a 100 grams difference, it wouldn't really matter. You're not going to get dropped because you've got 100 grams in your shoe at all. Nobody got dropped because they had mountain bike shoes on, top end mountain bike shoes. So these shoes are fantastic for cruising around, uh, walking around, pretty comfy. And this is a Bont mountain bike shoe. Again, very, very, there's no, there's no flex there. The reason I don't like these shoes though, even though they've been really, really good for me, is there's, the upper's quite sloppy because there's no boa dial to really cinch it down and have that perfect fit. So the old school way of doing it was like a, you know, ratchet system and a Velcro strap, which is better than nothing. It's a first world problem. But the boa dials, that's the best way it's at. The double way boa dial. Pop it in. And then, yeah. That's what we're talking. That's the, the best system ever. My favorite system. Two boa dials on the shoe. Two boa dials. And they're unidirectional. I mean, you can go tighten and loosen, tighten and loosen. Very, very simple. Pragmatic. Uh, the weights of these entry-level Shimano shoes. We're going to weigh these for the people out there. So this is a new shoe day video. This is mountain bike versus road. So these are 386 grams. And then we're going to weigh these again. So they're about... Three forty. These six scales maybe be broken. I don't know. Either way, the the scales could be could be broken. They're light enough. They're good enough. Um, again, nobody's getting dropped because their shoes are hundred or two hundred grams heavier than their, than their mates. All right, no, that's not happening. Nobody's getting dropped because they've got a top end mountain bike shoe. You know. And it, it's uh, yeah, so as stiff as the road version. Anyone who says otherwise, you, you know, you, you're full of it, or I mean, you're putting out 2,000 watts, and you can notice that difference. I certainly can't. I'm flexing with my arms here. So this is a fantastic setup. This is my recommendation: XC9s or a Bont shoe, or whatever fits your foot. Specialized, make a good shoe as well. Make sure it's wide enough. And when you're buying new shoes, make sure they're not too small, because your feet do expand over a long ride. So get the width, get the girth. Everyone loves a bit of girth and get the length. Everyone loves the length. Size does matter in your shoes. So longer is a bit better than shorter. I generally have about a thumb or a finger end of my shoes. All right. So you want to never want to feel your feet in your shoe, the tip. All right. If, if you feel your toe at the end, on touching the end, your shoe's too small. So you have a bit of a room there. And there you go. That's that's my recommendations. And also when you put your cleat in, uh, get a get a wide out pen. This is a really hot tip. Get a wide out pen and uh, mark it. So if it does slip, then you can angle it back, all right? And you wanna make it so your heel's typically in, almost buffing your cranks, and that will really alleviate ITB tension. Big tip there. So if you if you stand with your heels in, then you wanna line up so your heels are in when you pedal. If you stand heels out, then have it like that maybe. But most people are heels in when they stand. Look down at your feet. I even sitting down this fit ball, my heels are in. So line it up so your heels are in by angling that cleat towards a big toe and then get a white out pen mark it. Also put some grease in that thread there and that way you, your bolts won't corrode and rust in to your little anchor plate. That'll be much easier to get them loose next time. So there you go. There's the hot tips there. I've been using clipless pedals for 23 years now. Made a lot of mistakes and uh, bought, bought a lot of wanky road shoes over the years and expensive pedal systems. I've used all the systems, time, speed, play, look, you know, Campag, Shimano, all the, all the gig and the, my favorite these days is just a simple Shimano XTR pedal with a top end high performance lightweight super stiff double direction boa dial shoe that really snugs the foot but yeah is long enough for those long epic rides but it just has a really strong performance race feel and I get that in the XC9s I get that in the Bont Vapor G's the st stiff you want a stiff sole and you want some rubber on there so you can walk around and just get the stiffest shoe you can get with a rubber sole, boa dials, 
and set and forget and fucking ride hard. Fucking flog yourself. So to answer the question, do you need road shoes to get a fast, fit, hot looking, fit, lean, toned body? Looking like a high carb vegan cyclist. Do you need road shoes to do that? The answer is no. If you want fit legs, fit body, fit results, adventure riding style, if that's your alley way, is your goal is adventure, fitness, super fitness, super lean, super slim, super getting it done, carbed up, no restrictions, hydrated, fucking stimulant free energy, you're really getting it done, crushing it. If your goal is that, then mountain bike shoes, invest in a good pair of carbon sold race mountain bike shoes and they will help you for years and years and years. Do you need road shoes? No way. If you want to get them, get them. But don't think you need them and don't think they're going to help you with your goals because they ain't. The mountain bike shoe, race, cross country carbon level shoe is as good as it gets. It suits the adventure lifestyle rider. So what sort of rider are you? Are you a fashion cafe poser? Or are you an adventure rider who focuses on fitness, performance, being lean, fast, pragmatic, practical? What are you? Pretentious, poser, cafe? What are you? Either way, if you're riding a bike, fucking awesome.